no time for an intro today, guys. If you don't know who I am, you're going to have to figure it out on your own. My little motorbike here has, has puked out on me, and I'm sick to my stomach. Yesterday, I was riding this machine down to my buddy's house to help him out with a little bit. Anyways, I've got 700, it says here, 710 miles on this basket case since I assembled it. So I get halfway there to my buddy's house, and it starts, you know, pu 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 puking out a little bit. And I mentioned it in my moto vlog. I was like, is this bad gas or what? Anyways, it declines, declines, declines. Before you know it, I'm basically running on one cylinder, the other cylinder hitting intermittently. So we need to figure out what the heck's going on here. I am sick. First, just take a listen to this thing, and then I'll explain to you how I determined it's one cylinder that's missing and not, not both of them, not two. Here, listen to her. One thing I want you to notice right off, it's got, it's backfiring, it's popping, and it's making a backfiring noise through the exhaust. What that tells me normally is that is a spark issue. It's, it's cutting out. The spark's cutting out. And now, what I'm going to do to determine it's both cylinders and are... Sorry. What I'm going to do to determine that it's one cylinder misfiring, and I've already done, is just simply stick my hand while it's running up here against the exhaust. Just, just stick my hand there and feel it. And I could feel this, this side like popping. It's not a smooth exhaust. It's more of a flutter and a pop. And that's how I determined the right side is a cylinder we're having problems with and it is a spark or ignition problem. So there you go, a little visual presentation for you. Another indicator that I am having spark problems is within the points here. So I put my little CB350 in a house, so to speak, a cardboard house, and I'm gonna turn the lights off, and I'm gonna put my camera under here and show you guys what the points are doing. Isn't that interesting? This side, and this is the right side. How do I know that? It's labeled R here and L here, right and left. When you're sitting on the motorcycle and you stick your right hand out, that is your right side. Left hand, that's your left side. So this one, the right side, which is missing, is firing all kinds of spark out of this. This side is not, you, you hardly ever saw just a little spark come out of it. I find this to be interesting because you would think well, the right side is good. You know, it looks good. It's firing. It's sparking in the points. Wrong. It's bad. My, my guess at this thing, and let me tell you what I've done. It's got new points in it. It has new spark plugs in it. So all we have left is either a wiring issue or a coil or a condenser. I got this fuel tank raised up and held up with that cardboard right there. These fuel tanks, I, one thing I hate about them is this stupid tube here. And they improved that, I think, on the 360s. My beautiful lovely 360 over there anyways that sucks that tank deal there we are now able to access there's the condensers right there let me get you another view on the other side the condensers are right here on top of the coil so we could take these off these coils and or maybe even do it on it and ohm them and stuff like that I really just think I think I am right about the condenser being bad so I'm just gonna take them off and I think I got the ones on that 360. I think I'll just swap them out with the ones on that 360. Starting with these condensers only marks the beginning of about a day and a half searching for a bad ground. Let's look and see how the points are firing, guys. That'll be a dead giveaway, won't it? Here we go. Do we 
we have the same issue we had. So we still have an issue. Let me shut her down and we need to figure out what to do next. Where do we go from here? It is possible I have two bad condensers, but I doubt it because it's still on the same side. So I'm thinking coil. And I'm just going to swap it out because just because, like I said, that's the quickest thing for me to do. I have the parts here. But you could go through and just check everything. Let's try that, see what happens. So here we go again. And swapping this coil out actually could have fixed my issue, but not this time. It could have caused the same symptoms as what I had, but this didn't fix it. Coils installed. Round two. See what happens. Click with the key. Turn signal. Pop down for some reason. Here we go. Moment of truth. Oh, it sounds better. Let's check our points. Before we go revving on it and stuff, let's just look at what the points look like. At this point, what I'm thinking is those points are set too close together, and I just don't know how that would happen. I can't find my feeler gauge, so I'm just going to crack them open a little bit and run it, see what happens. Clearly at this point, I'm doing things out of frustration. I knew the points didn't move, and if I had any kind of thought that they did, I should have just found my feeler gauges or bought some new ones and checked them instead of creating myself all this extra work. Gaps opened up on the points now. Check it out. That stupid cable's in the way. There we go. Let's say get her down to 1200. Come on, baby, slow down. Good enough. So to my surprise at this point, I thought this thing was really fixed. I even, you know, the points weren't sparking like they were before. And I even came up with an explanation why it was possible doing this would fix it. That's some crazy stuff. The reason I didn't think it was the points, and I'm going to have to go back and reset them where they're supposed to be exactly. But the reason I didn't believe it was the points is because they it happened all of a sudden. This thing just started missing a little bit and just kept going down 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 worse 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 till it was running like crap and so how did that happen how do the points even wear that quick you know what i mean get to that point and i guess all i can figure is it must have been a little bit rough here and this piece right here is plastic and i guess it just wore it down i don't know it, it feels smooth this is a mystery to me i don't know something like this for it to happen like it did is kind of weird. So it's back at it again. From here on, I would just keep messing with the points inside of there, the wires with the points and this and that. And sometimes it would actually be completely fixed. The points look great, it would run great. But then I'd go out and take it for a test trip, and it would just crap out again. Here's what the issue was, and I finally figured it out after two days. It's so funny, I pride myself on being a good mechanic. You know, I'm so smart. I'm so smart, I know everything. This will be an easy fix. I'll just throw a coil or condenser on it, or clean the grounds up and stuff like that. Well, guess what? Here we are, and here's what fixed it. What it is, guys, what it amounted to was there's not enough ground to this coil. Now, if you watch my series of videos on this basket case, I cleaned this frame both sides before I mounted this piece on here to make sure my grounds were clean. And then the battery terminal grounds, everything's clean, but obviously not clean enough because it wasn't enough ground. My solution, instead of going back cleaning all the grounds up, I just don't, just don't want to. It's just to run this wire right here. I put it in between the coil and the bracket. I ran it up through here, and it's going to go to the negative side of the battery. And that way I know 
I have a really good ground for those coils. And it should ground both of those coils because I put it underneath the bracket, uh, the underneath the coil so that it'll hit the bracket. Hopefully ground them good and I should have no more issues. I love that this happened. This is a great reminder not to be too arrogant about thinking you're a good mechanic. You're always a beginner. There's always something to learn or you'll always miss something obvious like I did in this case. This is what I've been wanting to see for the last two days. No spark in between either set of points. I believe it's all fixed, fellas. This is what I call being spanked by a 1971 CB350 Honda. Thanks for watching my video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I did not, and I repeat, I did not enjoy making this video. It was, it's frustrating, and that's how it goes with you know, intermittent problems. We started out with just a dead miss and then it became an intermittent problem and then finally it's it's fixed and I'm glad of it. There's gonna be a few of you that are pretty slick on these kind of things. So you need to know that yes, the coils where they attached to the bracket were also sanded and cleaned and that was not the issue. The issue was the bracket being grounded to the frame. If you're new to my channel and you like what you saw, I hope you'll consider subscribing. Don't forget to hit the like button. That'll help my channel to grow. And always, everyone, leave a comment below because your input's important to me. I like to know what you think about all these projects and what I'm doing with them. Guys, we'll see you next time.